Hi, I'm Raj Gupta from the American Society of Regional Anesthesia and Pain Medicine, and I'm here with Dr. David Edwards, and we're going to talk a little bit about transitional pain services. So, David, talk to me a little bit about our transitional pain service here at Vanderbilt and kind of what the importance of that service was to the overall care of the patients. Well, I think uh, every institution is unique, and so as we're forming a service, our service at Vanderbilt is unique to Vanderbilt. It has a uh, structure that, that works within our enhanced recovery programs. And and why is it important? Well, I think, you know, as anesthesiologists, we try not to cause pain. We try to prevent pain. And when we're really looking to to treat our patients who go through surgery, we we want to look at them as far upstream as we can to prevent it and as far downstream as we can to to treat it um, and help it to go away. Um, I think that requires some services that anesthesiologists aren't typically involved in unless you're a chronic pain doctor like myself in an ambulatory clinic. So we have all the pieces together. We have chronic pain clinics, ambulatory. We have acute pain services inpatient um, a lot across a lot of different institutions. And uh, we're all obviously all in the operating room. So we really need to find ways to link those three services fluidly to benefit the patients long term. It feels like in the past, patients have had really good care in each of these elements, but we haven't connected those dots to hand over the care from one place to the next. Do you see that's where the transitional pain service really shines, is connecting those dots? I think we've seen it as... In, in each one of those pockets as we build collaborations, enhanced recovery services, which bring together specialty teams across the hospital. When we work together and standardize the care, the outcomes improve. So this is kind of a natural iteration of that. Where we're expanding upstream and downstream for the patients. Um, and yeah, really connecting our services together is the key. When you talk about upstream and downstream, what kinds of services are important in a transitional pain service upstream that will affect their outcomes postoperatively? So I guess we all wonder what we can do to prevent um, the development of acute and then chronic pain. And so in the immediate upstream, of course, we have our regional services, which do our regional anesthesia blocks, and we start at incorporating potentially preventative medicines like gabapentin or, or Tylenol. Um, but thinking even further upstream, if patients are optimized on those kinds of medications or can anticipate what's coming ahead for their surgery and their anxiety is reduced, could those things even add further to the prevention of the development of and the poor experiences with chronic pain? And one, one step even further, you know, some of those patients, if you identify and stratify them for, far enough ahead of their surgery, you have time to intervene. So pain is pain, but pain is modulated by all these other diseases that patients have, like anxiety, like uncontrolled depression, um, mood disorders or addictions, um, substance use disorders. That's not something that can be treated on the day before surgery um, in an optimal setting. So the further upstream you can anticipate that and, and intervene, hopefully we can see long-term outcomes that improve for patients. Is the benefit of transitional pain services really on patients who already have chronic pain and are now going through surgery? I think we don't know the answer to that um, quite yet. Um, we have some evidence out there that if we control certain risk factors far enough upstream that we have better patient outcomes. Potentially, if we were able to reduce some level of opioid in some of the patients who can tolerate it leading up to surgery, they may have better and lower adverse risks um, after surgery. Um, but really, the jury's out um, if we add things like gabapentin six months ahead of time or two months ahead of time or one week ahead of time. Does that result in a in, uh, develop, uh, lower incidence of the development of chronic pain? It seems like building a transitional pain service is a very complicated task. Um, for somebody that's new to this, what do you think you recommend how they begin this process? Who, is, who are the right people to take on the charge? And then who are the right people that they need to talk to first to get their feet off the ground? Well, I like how Vanderbilt's done it where it's just all who are interested are all in. And everyone has a different 
perspective and skill set and knowledge, and we all read the literature together. And the more we have uh, perioperative physicians who expand um, further and further away from the actual operative setting, the better we are. But um, at Vanderbilt, uh, we, we have perioperative physicians, um, we have acute pain and chronic pain crossover physicians, and we have teams of nurse practitioners. And everyone is on these teams is interested in, in how to uh, treat these patients the best. And, and when we have protocols and pathways of care that, that transition with the patients across our services, then the patients get the most streamlined care. And so that's kind of where we're working at right now is, you know, we have really strong um, ambulatory setting uh, providers and, and perioperative providers and making those connections even stronger um, is, is proving to be a, a challenge, but also a benefit to patients. When they go through this process, they're like, I've never experienced such good uh, care throughout my whole continuum of my surgery from beginning to end. And they're really pleased. Azure is doing a symposium uh, in the fall, September 25th. I think you're going to be one of the faculty members for that symposium. It's a virtual symposium. Um, anybody is welcome to join and register. You go to azure.com and you can register. It's called the Persistent Perioperative Pain Symposium. Obviously, transitional pain is part of this conversation, but persistent perioperative pain is, um, an, a, I think, a growing realization that we've gotten really good at what's happening in the acute pain, but we really need to figure out what happens later for patients. Yeah, I think that's really, really important, um, especially I'm a cr chronic pain physician, but also uh, love spending time on acute pain services. And I think about that all of the time as surgeries improve, as they become more minimally invasive and the other, side, other complications of surgeries are reduced, what is emerging is that what's left over is patients still experiencing chronic pain. And with chronic pain is usually chronic analgesics, analgesic use, and in the United States, especially a, a, an opioid epidemic that goes along with that. So as long as we continue to do surgeries at the rate that we're doing, we're gonna continue to have a percentage that develop chronic pain and a percentage of those that persist with prolonged opioid use and other complications. And uh, we have to keep tackling this with the best science that we have. And I'm really excited about this symposium because I would consider Vanderbilt service relatively new, and uh, my, myself and others, like Raj, Dr. Gupta here, learning from those who have developed these kinds of services uh, a decade ago, like Hans Clark out of Toronto, and Marie Hanna, and Johns Hopkins, Padma Galore at, at Duke, and others in, in Salt Lake. Um, a lot of people have developed these kinds of services, so all coming together for this, for this meeting, and, and it will be great to hear all their different perspectives. I want to thank Dr. Edwards for talking to us about this, a very important topic, and I think really one of the forefront topics for acute pain and chronic pain management is how do we connect those dots in between. Um, so as a reminder, uh, the Persistent Perioperative Pain Symposium hosted by ASRA will be on September 25th. It's a virtual meeting, so you can join from anywhere that you are. Anybody's welcome to register. Go to ASRA.com to find out more. If you are on social media, the hashtag for the meeting is going to be hashtag Azra PPPS for Persistent Perioperative Pain Symposium. So Azra PPPS is the hashtag. And again, September 25th, go to azra.com to register. Thank you very much, Dr. Edwards, and we look forward to talking to all of you guys soon. Thank you. Thanks.